Hello there, uh, welcome back to my kitchen and to another recipe and today I'm going to be cooking my cheesy cottage pie and I'm going to be complementing it with some sweet heart cabbage and some green, pe green beans so uh, I'm going to jump right in on this one today but there's one thing I want to do, I want to go through with you and that's the um, sweet heart cabbage so we'll prepare that and then we'll start the um, cottage pie so here is my sweet heart cabbage Quite a big one actually. Um, and how I'm going to do this, I'm just going to cut straight down the middle there, down the middle of the core, right down there. Straight in half. Now I'm only going to be using half of it. I'll take the top leaf off, get rid of that. Okay, so here's your cabbage. And again, cut it straight down the middle there. And once you've done that, just lie it on its side and shred it. So, don't forget to cut the core out. Just run your knife straight down there. Get rid of that core. And then shred the second bit. That's the, that's the cabbage prepared. That will now go into a pan of cold water, uh, salted water, and put to one side until it's needed. So the next stage now is to move on to the cottage pie. Okay, to, so to start this recipe, I've got one finely chopped onion, which I chopped earlier on. Um, <coughs> so I'm gonna need a tablespoon of olive oil, into a wok. So get yourself a good large wok for this. Uh, one tablespoon of olive oil. So let's get the onions in. And when these are done, you're going to be keep hold of this dish because you're going to be putting them back into this dish when they're cooked. So keep hold of the dish. You're not finished with it yet. So that's what onions have gone in. I'm going to drop a teaspoon of garlic granules in there and I'm going to fry them until they're nice and soft um, but don't over fry over cook them because you don't want them going soggy so I'm going to fry these until they're nice and soft then I'll get back to you see frying for about 3 or 4 minutes until they get nice and soft. Right, I'm happy with them now, so they can now be transferred back into that dish. So that's the onions prepared. Next, we add Some tomato puree, and we put another teaspoon of oil, of olive oil, sorry, into the wok. One teaspoon. Then we drop in the mince, minced beef. I've got five, uh, yeah, five hundred grams here. I've got should be seven hundred really, but I've got five hundred. Right, we drop that in. along with two tablespoons of our tomato puree put them in there, break your mince up fry your mince until it's browned all over there's no more red or no more pink you have to break it all up. Right, 
So this is getting there now. So the next step, as it starts to brown, drop your onions back in and mix them well in. Now on the recipe it mentions uh, 150 millilitres of red wine, but my wife can't have red wine, unfortunately. So instead of red wine, I'm going to be using 100, about 100 millilitres of just water. So that's in replace of the red wine. But if you want to put red wine in, just use the red wine. It is quite nice actually with red wine. So this is getting there now, it's all browning off nicely. So this is where you would add your red wine. But as I'm not using red wine, I'll be using water. So I'm just going to drop 100 millilitres of water in there and get that all mixed up. And then I'm going to give it a good seasoning with some salt from a great height. And a good helping of black pepper and then we just give it all another good mixing and then we just start adding all the seasoning and the stock so in here I've, I've, had, I've mixed one stock cube one beef stock cube with 400 millilitres of water so that can now go in there all good mixing up. So that's 400 millilitres of beef stock and then we now we now add <coughs> one tablespoon of plain flour a good sprinkling in this will help to thicken it up one tablespoon of thyme Drop a tablespoon of thyme in there. One tablespoon of rosemary. Drop that in there. A good splash of Worcester sauce. Give it all a good mixing up now. And then what you need to do now is leave that to simmer for about 40 minutes on a low heat. So, so it'll thicken up. Just leave it to thicken up for about 40 minutes. So 20 minutes into the cooking, I'm going to be starting to be potatoes in the cabbage. So while this is doing, I'm going to be peeling the potatoes and preparing them. So I'm just going to stick the lid on that, let it simmer for about 40 minutes. 20 minutes into that, I'm going to start the potatoes, or maybe even 30 minutes into that, because I want them nice and soft. So I'm going to tidy up. Prepare the potatoes and then uh, we'll move on to the next okay, stage. So it's been uh, about <coughs> about 20 minutes in. I'm now going to start the potatoes. I'll just turn the potatoes on to boiling. Uh, I've peeled them and quartered them. Make sure when you do that you rinse your potatoes off to get rid of that starch. You want your water nice and clear. Uh, you want to be able to see the right through the water. You don't want murky water in your potatoes. So I'm going to let them boil now for about 30 minutes, maybe 35 minutes, I want them nice and soft. Um, once they start to boil, I'm going to turn on the sweetheart cabbage because that will take about, once it starts to boil, it will take about 18 minutes or so for that to do. So we're really now waiting for the potatoes, which will be the next stage. I've got a tin of peas and, the, and carrots here, which I'm going to drain and wash, and they're going to go into the mixture. And then I've got a glass oven proof dish here which will be transferring all the mixture in and when the potatoes are done I'm going to mash them with some butter, milk and some double cream and they will, they will be spread on top of it and then it will go under the grill for, um, to just to brown the potatoes off and then I'm going to sprinkle some cheese on top of that and put it back under the grill and cook the cheese so once the potatoes are ready I'll come back so I've drained off my garden peas and rinsed them under the sink and I've also drained off the carrots and rinsed them under the sink. Now what I want to do with the carrots is 
just get a knife and just cut them up to make them a bit smaller and then we're going to add them to the mixture so cut, cut your carrots up just roughly and then once that's done throw everything into the mixture so about 25 minutes into the cooking time add your peas your garden peas and these are the carrots that I've chopped up a little bit from out of the tin, tin carrots, so make them go in there. And then mix everything in and just let it cook for another 15 minutes. And that's the mixture pretty much ready to go into the uh, glass dish. So about another 15 more minutes, this should thicken up nicely and it'll be ready for adding to the dish. So, it takes all now, it's boiling about 30, 30, 30, not 35 minutes. Just get a pointed knife, it's got the mids of potatoes, it needs to be nice and soft. Ready for mashing. And they're about ready. So, I'm going to move on to mashing these now. The mixture itself is thickening up nicely. The sweet tart cabbage is falling away nicely. So, what we're going to do now is mash the potatoes. and add the mixture into the glass dish for putting under the grill. So that's the next step. Okay, so to, to do the potatoes, I've got some double cream, some butter, and some semi-skimmed milk, and some black pepper. So, drain your potatoes off. Drop them into your pan. Good squirt of black pepper. Good dollop of butter. Now, when you're doing this, remember you can add, but you can't take away. So, drop a little bit of milk in, just a little bit at a time, because you don't want them soppy, soaking wet through, and start to mash your potatoes. Now, you want them nice and soft for spreading on top of your mixture. good mashing and now I'm going to add some double cream touch more double cream what really smooth mashed potato make it easy to spread on top of the mixture. Just, gonna touch, just a touch more milk. And that's perfect. Mmm. Now we're gonna add the mixture into the dish. Smells beautiful. Okay, and then you're going to spread it all out to make it all nice and even. Smell, it's beautiful. You want to smell it honestly. It smells the divine, beautiful. Okay, so that's that bit done. So next bit we're going to, to distribute the potatoes onto that mixture nice and evenly. So that's the next step. Okay, so now we're going to start Add in the potato. That's all the potato. Mm, beautiful that. And what I'm going to do now, mm, I'm going to turn my grill on to high, get it preheated. Okay, now what we want to do now is to start leveling this off, just moving it off like this. And what we're going to use for this is a pallet knife. Okay, get it nice and 
smoothed out like this. Now we're going to put this under the grill, high heat, and let it just brown off a little bit. And then we're going to sprinkle some cheese on top of this and then put it back under to cook the cheese. So I'll get it all nice and smoothed off. Like this. Looking good. Okay. And if you want to be fancy, just get a fork and run some lines down it. Okay, so I'm now going to transfer that into the grill and we'll cook it until it just, just about when it gets starts to get go brown. Then I'll take it out, add the cheese, and then put it back under the grill again. In the meantime, I'm going to check my cabbage. So we put it under the grill, which is set to high heat, middle shelf. Keep an eye on it. You want, you want, to, you want it to just start to go brown, the mashed potato. So we'll take it out, sprinkle some cheese on top, and put it back under. And until, until the cheese is cooked. So that'll be the next step. Okay, so let's have a look at that guys. It's going to be hot. Now as you can see, that's browning over nicely. So what I want to do now is to sprinkle some cheese on that. Okay, so let's sprinkle a little bit of cheddar, cheddar cheese over the top of it. Stick it back under while that cheese is cooking, I'll drain off the cabbage. Dish out and uh, the usual, sit down and enjoy it. So, sprinkle, just sprinkle your cheddar cheese on top of there. See how the potatoes have all browned on top? Really nice. The smell in here is divine. You want to be in this kitchen. So, good, good help in a cheese. Up to you how much cheese you put on. You know, just can tell you up to you. Spin, spread it all about. Now I'm going to slide that back under there about well a few minutes until the cheese is cooked and it'll give me a chance to drain off my cabbage so I'll see you in a minute or two and that mate that guys is my cheesy cottage pie hope you liked the, uh, the video if you did please click on like and subscribe and stay tuned for some more of my Delicious recipes, they should be coming soon. And thanks for watching.